Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. From the Vascular Department of Hospital de Cruces in Spain, we would like to give you a very warm welcome to our live webinar regarding percutaneous venous arterialization. We are aiming to have a 100% interactive uh, session so that we will be delighted to receive all your queries and remarks to be responded at the end of our presentations. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, we have already received several queries from the attendants that will be sorted out at the end in the discussion. First of all, we'd like to hand over to Dr. Alobato, who's going to present an update of the state of the art of deep venous arterialization in his NHES PowerPoint. Well, we are going to talk about percutaneous venous arterialization. No option critical limb ischemia is the absence of distal target vessel or severe calcification heavy plaque burden that results in elastic recoil and early restenosis after angioplasty. Desert foot is the absence of plantar arteries, plantar arch, dorsalis pedis, and lateral tarsal artery, and this is about 20% of patients with critical limb ischemia. There have been described several bailout alternatives for this no option critical limb ischemia patients. In this review, and with very low quality evidence, only a spinal cord stimulation and intermittent compression may reduce the risk of amputation. This meta analysis about the venous arterialization provides data uh, on the clinical effectiveness of venous arterialization for limb salvage in this kind of patients. This study states two crucial points. The more distal the location of the AV fistula, the better, and the importance of the disruption of the venous valves. How does DVA work? First, pedal capillaries are filled up retrogradely through the venous system, increasing flow in hibernating collaterals and increasing direct nutrition of tissue. And finally, it seems to be an angiogenesis effect. In this review, the limb salvage rate was about 75% at 12 months. And if we talk about total percutaneous deep venous arterialization, there are basically three described techniques. The well-known limb flow system and the variant described by Migliara using the Pioneer catheter, the homemade technique by Roberto Gandini, and the BAS technique. The limb flow device is an ultrasound-based alignment system that enhances the needle of the arterial catheter to penetrate into the vein. Thereafter, a crossover stem and distal extension are deployed. Stephen Kuhn in his pilot study show a technical success rate of 100% with a limb salvage rate of 70%. The median bone healing time was 4.6 months. The main advantage of the limb flow system it that this is a codified technique with dedicated element that permits a high technical success rate. The main details, however, are the high cost and still very low availability. The high profile of the arterial catheter and the needle penetration power should be taken into account, particularly when dealing with a small tortuous or calcified vessels. In the maneuver described by Migliera, Using uh, the Pioneer catheter, he obtained a high technical success rate of uh, 94% with limb salvage rate of 66%. Candine's technique is based on anatomical di distribution of the veins at both sides of the artery at the level of the foot. An angled catheter is faced to the arterial wall and a CTO gut wire is used to access into the vein. In his nine cases, his uh, technical success rate was 77%, with limb salvage rate around 70%. This is basically an inexpensive technique, since all the required material is already on the table in a BTK case. The distal location of the AV fistula permits to follow the angiosome and the venosome concept. However, the 22 failure rate may still be an issue. 
and this may be due to the inability to locate the vein and steer the catheter, or either to the inability to penetrate heavily calcified vessels. So, it would be ideal to join the effectiveness of the lymph flow system with the low cost of Gandini's, and that's why we propose white no changing lymph flow concept to vast flow concept being vast venous arterialization simplified technique. And this has been published this year in the Journal of Endovascular Therapy. What we do is after a failed BTK recanalization attempt, we leave the guide wire in place and advance a 3 mm balloon. Then, a distal vein access is gained and a 5 mm snare advanced through it until it's aligned with the balloon. Then, we'll look for the best projection that overlaps both elements and thereafter perform an orthogonal view to find out which is the position of the vein with regards to the artery. If the vein is located above the artery, what we call VAS1, what we do is to puncture the vein passing through the snare up to the balloon. Then the balloon is punctured, the gyre is advanced and locked inside it, the balloon is retrieved through the going axis, and using this through and through, a catheter is advanced up to the vein, and the axis is secured with balloon dilatation. These are clinical images of VAS1 technique. As you can see, both elements are clearly distinguished. When um, the vein is located below the artery, we call it VAS2. And what we do is a piercing the balloon, um, going to the vein, passing through the snare. Then the snare and the wire is retrieved through the venous axis. A catheter is passed up to the artery, and then the axis is secure again with a balloon dilatation. And these are clinical images of VAS2 technique with very good results. We can also perform the VAS technique using two snares, and this is what we call double snare technique, either 41 as you can see in this image, or VAS2. Actually, we currently favor this version since it streamlines the whole procedure. And these are clinical images of a vast technique using two snares. In our study published in the Journal of Endovascular Therapy, we perform five cases. In one case, once the AV fistula had been already performed, the arterialization could not be finished due to the impairment of the clinical condition of the patient. In the four remaining cases, the limb salvage rate was 75%. In one case, as you can see here, we performed a reintervention which consisted in arterial reangioplasty and venous embolization to focus the flow to the foot. The main advantage of the VAS technique is the low cost and universal availability. There is no longer a blind technique since both elements, balloon and snare, are uh, very well distinguished. The, te the technical difficulty is quite low, particularly for operators with minimal experience in retrograde puncture. And it also permits a distal location of the AV fistula compared with lymph flow system. The needle penetration power is remarkably increased, particularly in cases of uh, severe calcification. Moreover, the BAS technique is the only one that offers the possibility to perform the TVA in a distal location or in a proximal one, lymph flow like. And the key point in venous arterialization is the post TVA surveillance. You need to have a 360 close follow up with multidisciplinary wound care and selective debridement in case of access and wet and cream. And you should be patient to stand the storm. The storm was DPA um, with swelling, cyanosis, and distal necrosis. 
because it takes six weeks to see the clinical improvement with granulation tissue and wound healing. And this is an example of typical clinical evolution of the wounds. Following these six, eight weeks, you need to be expeditious due to the low patency rate to perform in time tension free amputation. And it's also crucial to have a very low threshold for reintervention. And what the future holds? Um, we have recently known at Viva 19 the final six month outcomes of PROMISE 1 with technical success rate of 97% and amputation free rate of 74%. Recently, FDA had approval the bipotal study PROMISE 2, which is a multi center prospective single arm with a long follow up of three years in two countries, US and Japan, and with recruitment of 60 to 120 patients. And now, we will hand over to Dr. Isa, who is going to present a clip of BAS, to, uh, of BAS technique in a special location. With this clip, we want to show you that with our technique, one can neither perform a fistula in a distal location or in a proximal one. Well, as you know, uh, we clearly flavor the distal location of the AV fistula, but sometimes in case of uh, recoiling or heavily calcified vessels, we probably need to move over upwards, trying to get a bit the best inflow for our, for our DVA. So this is an example of how to perform a lymph flow-like fistula. This is a diagnostic angio, and you can see that there's a VTK occlusion of the three vessels. Definitely, they are, uh, it's, this is a heavily calcified uh, type, and nobody uh, can argue that this is not a desert food, no, nothing on the rear or the forefoot. So you get, we get an access to the venous plantar vein, we, Put a wire over the 21 gauge needle, it's going up parallel to the artery. We place a four frame sheath. And now we're going to perform a flavography to know that we are in the main trunk of the vein. So push the wire up, up to the spot point. Uh, at the proximal aspect of the PT uh, vein, and this is an arterial flavor, uh, simultaneous flow angiogram to look for the best spot to make our communication. So we uh, progress a uh, snare from the venous axis, progress a second snare from the arterial one, and overlap both snares so that we can punch or percutaneously both the snares. Then we progress a 014 uh, wire until it's clearly placed exovascularly. You can see that the needle crosses both uh, snares. So we retrieve the needle, close the venous snare, and withdraw in from the venous axis uh, on the foot. We thereafter close the arterial snare and withdraw it up to the level of the groin. We use this through and through wire to progress a balloon catheter to establish the communication. And this is the first angio. You can see it's already made with no leakages. Thereafter, we will progress a cover stand, balloon expandable. This is a 3.5. and we're gonna flare the venous segment with a five millimeters balloon.
this is an angel and as you can see we need to make some room for the uh, cover stem and this is going to be done with another uh, five millimeters balloon dilatation. Once we have enough room, we will deploy our self-expandable cover stem. We will perform some balloon angioplasty. And now it's time to get access to the Venus plantar arch. So we loop the tip of our wire up to the Venus arch. This is the uh, exit from the medial marginal and uh, great saphenous vein. So we place our wire in the great saphenous vein, balloon angioplastic with a four or five millimeters balloon. And on the completion, we observe that there was a stop in the contrast, which means probably that there's still a valve, a residual valve obstruction that we will sort out with a cut a cutting balloon, a 3.5 millimeters cutting balloon. We open it and gently retrieve it as a sort of uh, valvulotome, surgical valvulotome. And this is the final result. The, the patent graph and excellent flow uh, to the foot and to the arch. We hope that the clip has been educational at all and also has clarified your concerns with regards our technique. Now we're gonna have uh, more or less half an hour for your queries and remarks. Please feel free to post uh, your comments on our wall, on the website, and uh, kindly identify yourself at uh, your institution or your country. In the meantime, we can just kick, kick off the questions we uh, previously received question. Uh, Dr. Herrera from Colombia asked us, what is the recommended post-operative uh, medical treatment? Okay, we usually use uh, oral anticoagulation in combination with single antiplatelet therapy for at least six months, or while the IV fistula is still a uh, patent. Dr. Thomas from Netherlands, what kind of wire and snare do you use in your technique? Well, we use a uh, 0.14 uh, uh, advantage wire from Terumo, and the snare is a 5 mm ghost net uh, snare uh, from EV3. There's another question regarding is an occlusion of the PT artery a contraindication for performing a distal DBA? Well, it's a good question, but the, our answer is no. Definitely what we do in case of stenosis or occlusion of the PT, we volume them, gain a channel, either intraluminal or supintimal, and once you get your channel up to the heel, drain this channel into the vein. Dr. Lobato, how do you track the outcomes of your technique? This is from Italy. TCPO2, duplex ultrasound? Well, we use both. We measure a transcutaneous oximetry and we will see the improvement. And this is really important because at the time of bone healing, most of patients have a more than 40 millimeters in this measurement. Also, a duplex flow measurement is really useful uh, to know what's happening uh, with uh, AV fistula. If you have a decrease of, a of AV flow, or AV flow is um, below um, 100%, 100 uh, millimeter per minute, your AV fistula is at risk of thrombosis. So you must check what's going on with this. And as we have said, uh, we may have a very low threshold for reintervention in these cases, uh, because we need uh, that uh, the bone uh, to be uh, closed. Uh, Zuniga from Ecuador. With regards to distal DVA, do you need a crossover stem to prevent ble bleeding? Uh, actually not. We don't use any crossover stem, because what we have seen is once you make the communication, the flow tends to go to the lowest uh, pressure side, which is the vein.
Uh, Dr. Alobato, Dr. Wall from Australia, how do you deal with the Venus Bell? Okay, this is a good question. In our institution, we have uh, no uh, percutaneous valvulotomes available. So what we do to destroy the valves is a uh, balloon angioplasty. And only, if necessary, we use a cutting balloon. Baker from UK, what recommendations would you give us to overcome the valves and reach the plantar arch. This is a key point. And even though Dr. Ferresi has described his dancing wire technique, what we actually do is just to loop the tip of the wire and gently cross uh, the valves with a loop wire. How do you treat venous art or arterial vasospasm? Well, we use um, 200 micro of nitro. It's, this is uh, usually our drug in these cases. Okay, excellent. And more or less, what is the average time that this uh, intervention takes? Well, when we started with this technique, it was um, a little bit longer. But right now, um, it's usually around two hours. So Dr. Zola Dandu, hello, Dr. Dandu, asks us if we use any stem at all in the distal DVA. Now, definitely not. I think this is the main advantage of a distal DVA. You don't need to use stents because you don't need A, treat the valves, and B, uh, avoid the bleeding off uh, of the collaterals mm -hmm. of the vein. If you perform your DVA at the level of the anchor, there are really few valves because actually the last valve is located midway uh, in the foot. What do you think? Which technique is easier? Gandini's or the BAS technique? I'd say that Gandini's is probably easier if you uh, don't do it on purpose. And it's quite common that trying to perform a distal normal uh, revascularization attempt, you can end up uh, uh, in the vein. But I think it's as uh, Gandini's described in his own series, he has a 20% uh, failure rate when he tried to do in purpose. So the best advantage of BAS compared with Gandini's is that you clearly have reference to perform your communication. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another question from Dr. Alonso in Spain. Do you immediately perform DVA in case of conventional robotic equalization uh, failure? Well, this has changed quite a lot. Initially, uh, we did it, but it took quite a lot of time uh, summing up the revascularization time at end and the DVA. So what we currently do is just to end up our failure uh, revascularization arterial at end and reschedule uh, the patient 24 hours or 48 uh, later and, the, and then just focus our attention in the DVA uh, procedure. Do you ever get plantar pain access or do you always get access by the ankle? No, uh, actually you've seen uh, an axis in the ankle in our tutorial video, but a plantar vein axis is quite easily to obtain because uh, at that level the vein is quite uh, uh, easily located. Do you perform a preoperative ultrasound or phlebography uh, uh, assessment prior to the DVA? Well, we perform it in, in every case because it's crucial to know how are a crucial um, veins in, at the level of the foot, a lateral a plantar vein, and how is the venous system previous to, to perform this technique. We have another question. How much does it take to have an acceptable proficiency of BAST? I would say that it's not an easy and a difficult procedure, uh, to be honest. If you have uh, enough experience in performing retrograde punctures, puncturing a snare of 4 or 5 millimeters is a piece of cake compared with a 2.5 or, or 3 DCs arterial vessel. So what would you say is the best vessel to perform a distal uh, arterialization? Well, um... In every study, um, it's well known that the uh, concomitant veins of a uh, lateral, uh, posterior tibial artery are the best vessel to, to perform this technique. So we have a question for uh, regarding the rate of limb salvage rate uh, of our, I, 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 
guess it means our series. We just, as Dr. Lovato has mentioned, assess these guys clinically and with TCPO2 uh, flow rate and uh, our limb solver rate is around 70% as it is in most of the series already published. Dr. Uh, Sola uh, has a question. If uh, there is any difference with using anterior tibial or posterior tibial? Okay, so the question was uh, why PT rather than AT. What we were saying is that PT, the anatomical structures, the artery and vein are closer, are clearly defined. And the main pitfall for the AT is the location and also the fascia, which can compress the uh, DVA. Also, in extension, you can have some compression of, of the DVA. That's why we prefer the posterior tibial. What is the best projection to puncture the snares? This is a good technical question. What we do is just to uh, look for the best projection that overlaps both the snares and trying to get a sort of a spot, ima spot image of the needle. If you've got this image, uh, the ball eye technique is easy to perform. You just next need to progress your needle up to the end. Antiplatelet and anticoagulant uh, therapy may increase the risk of bleeding. What is our thoughts? Well, we haven't seen any bleeding or huge hematoma or leakage uh, following any of our procedures. And the main advantage of this dual uh, therapy is that it keeps your uh, DVA patent for a longer time. Dr. Sola also has a question about this uh, issue about the using of double antiplatelet uh, in combination with oral anticoagulation. Um, they use double antiplatelet therapy with uh, oral anticoagulation. We only use single antiplatelet therapy with, uh, in combination with oral anticoagulation. Yeah, definitely there are some groups, uh, including in the uh, US, that are in favor for a dual antiplatelet therapy. But in our experience, this uh, oral uh, anticoagulation and single antibiotic therapy is a good, uh, uh, a good treatment. And it's more or less the same what this, the uh, Dr. Kuhn uh, itself, his, himself uses. How far should I extend the cover stand in a lymph flow like procedure in the ankle? As Dr. Migliara stands, overpassing the, uh, the lancinatum ligament. And this is what we do when we perform a, a proximal DVA uh, fistula. And uh, we think this is uh, to avoid the compression uh, at the level of the foot. Yeah, when we mark with uh, the former question from Dr. Sola, he's asking aspirin or plavix, mm -hmm. we use aspirin. How do you deal with the post-DVA storm? Well, what we have seen that it is quite variable. We have uh, patients with uh, uh, moderate edema, uh, some swelling, but not too much. In case you have a really uh, considerable swelling leg, we, put, we use uh, leg elevation and occasionally diuretics. And for the treatment of pain, we use current uh, painkillers and if needed, opioids or even an uh, inter uh, catheter, intradural catheter. Are the results of percutaneous arterialization, this is from Dr. Omar, uh, Saudi Arabia, comparable to the ones uh, of the hybrid or conventional surgical arterialization? Yes, they are. Uh, uh, from the meta-analysis from Shriva, uh, the main average of limb salvage rate is in all of these studies at about 60 to 70 percent. And we have another question. Uh, what expandable balloon stand and what cover stand do you use? Well, uh, we use uh, Biotronic Papyrus uh, 3.5 millimeter cover stand and uh, we use a cover uh, self expandable stand by a band of 5 millimeters. Charles from Belgium. Is venous arterialization indicated for treating rest pain? Well, uh, in fact, uh, in, Kant's, in Stephen Combs study and uh, the PROMIS uh, study, there are some uh, patients included with rest pain 
that resolve the rest pain in 48 hours. And uh, this actually is a really good result. Uh, in long term, it seems to be this recruitment of the effect of the DVA that may last uh, regardless the occlusion of the DVA. And that's why we really think that rest pain could be an indication for the treatment. What is your opinion about the anti-grade valvulotome of the lymph flow system? Okay, as uh, we have already said, uh, we have no uh, percutaneous valvulotomes available in our institution. So we can't say a lot about that, but uh, in some cases uh, with the lymph flow system, uh, they also use balloon dilatation in, in in, if necessary. Uh, the concern is that in some cases, uh, balloon dilatation could be uh, a problem with breast stenosis. But what do you think about that in this case? I definitely agree with you. I think that that is the, the issue. Uh, do you systematically perform great saphenous vein ligation or venous collateral embolization? Uh, no. We actually just perform our DVA. We wait for at least three, four weeks, see the clinical improvement, and in case we don't get a good improvement of the foot, we perform an angio or another assessment, and if necessary, we perform uh, the embolization of the veins on, and under local anesthesia, the gerd saphenous bay ligation. Dr. Patel from India, is uh, the lymph flow system available worldwide? Well, it is not yet. It will be, but not yet. Uh, so we are, I think the company is still waiting for the results of the promise to trial just to launch it uh, worldwide. Well, Dr. Jimenez from Colombia asked how long is the procedure related in angios youth time? Well, we have already mentioned initially it took us uh, quite a long time. It, I would say like four hours. But the latest one uh, has just taken us two hours. We don't have an angio suite. We perform them in our OR theater. Uh, and you don't actually need a really fancy equipment to perform a DVA. In case of DVA occlusion, how do you perform your redos? This is a good point because, and it's uh, the main difference of uh, performing a proximal uh, DVA compared with a distal DVA. When we have an occlusion in a distal DVA, we just need to re-PTA as shown. And the, f the fact is that just uh, making your angioplasty, you uh, end up having flow again. Uh, on the other hand, if you perform a proximal DVA, you need to make a mechanical thrombectomy using a Rotarex or whatever, extending uh, if necessary with a stent and this tangles quite a lot of the procedure uh, and increases the cost of the overall procedure. And um, when do you wait to perform the digital amputation? <laughs> well, actually, you need to be patient. It's already mentioned again. Uh, we wait at least six to eight weeks, uh, time enough to get some granulating tissue, and it's the time needed for the veins to arterialize uh, themselves. Is there any contraindication in terms of clinical uh, contraindication for patients to uh, be a good candidate for DVA? So uh, I would say that uh, we don't include obviously people with allergy or a contraindication for oral anticoagulation. In some of the studies, uh, renal failure uh, and stage renal failure uh, excludes uh, the patient. This has happened. In with a promised one. Uh, we also uh, don't uh, include patients with deep venous thrombosis. And in case of sepsis, we also uh, think that these guys are not good candidates for perform a DVA. This is a good point because infection uh, is a, a, a huge infection, or if you have a, a, a exposure of the calcaneus, I wouldn't perform a DVA in that sort of patients. Do you use uh, another medical treatment associated with your procedure in order to improve wound healing? 
No, actually not. Uh, we don't use stem cell therapy. We don't use prostanoids. We try to uh, use a negative uh, pressure vacuum therapy, which uh, uh, helps us to uh, get good granulating tissue. A depressed ejection fraction would be a contraindication for DVA. Well, a severe depression, yes, if you perform the fistula in a proximal location. In a distal location, I think that no. One of the things that we have observed uh, with regards to the post-storm DVA is that uh, when we have performed proximal DVA, this storm is uh, bigger uh, or more evident than uh, when we're performing a, a distal DVA. I think that this has to do because the uh, outflow of our distal DVA uh, is, is better in terms of uh, focalizing the flow to the foot and avoiding all of the systemic effect of the proximal DVA. What could be the average cost of a, a proximal DVA? in terms of uh, devices and uh, cover stems. Well, we uh, unfortunately don't have, uh, obviously, a lymph flow available and uh, we neither have the Pioneer device. So, uh, what we have seen uh, in, is that this cost probably would be more or less $20,000, dollars 20, uh, Dr. Rodi, how do you follow up the patient underwent TTA? Well, we have already mentioned we clinical follow these guys. Uh, most, most of them recover distal pulses, and we also perform TCPO2 and duplex ultrasound imaging. Well, I think the, definitely we just ran out of time, and probably it's time to finish this uh, amazing webinar. Okay. Many thanks to you all to have in attending our webinar. We, do, we would also like to thank to Cardiva for, uh, for sponsoring this session and to our chairman, Dr. Fonseca, for uh, supporting our unit. Okay, please don't hesitate to contact us via email or social media in case any query may arise over the time. Uh, we would like to share uh, your experience as well in DVA, so we're waiting for your feedback. Okay, we are looking forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye.